Okay, we're back. Next thing we're going to be doing, um, we're going to vacuum form these canopies from the uh, plugs that we just cast. So there's several steps we've got to go through before we actually get to that point. The first one is uh, just to clean off any excess uh, little ridges or anything that may be on here. If you didn't do a good job uh, on your original mold, there's a couple of little things. So I just use a 150 grit wet and dry paper and uh, sand it out any time it's going to impact your mold or your uh, canopy when you mold it. That's one thing nice about this okra towel is it really stands now. And uh, it's not too soft, it's real hard, but it still does stand down with the, with the wet and dry paper. So, uh, make any bumps off the edges. Go off any excess there. Okay. That looks pretty good. Now, if you're concerned about the grit on your paper, on the, one thing that you can actually do, you can actually get a plug too smooth so that when you vacuum form it, um, the air isn't allowed to flow out and you get uh, you don't get a pure a, a good adhesion to the uh, the curve here because the air can't get out. So you need those little channels to suck that air out of there. 150 grit is is not that uh, rough, but I will sometimes after the 150, I'll just touch it at the 220, and I'll never go below 220. I don't want to go down to 600 or 1200. Or Anything like that, like you would on the inside of a fiberglass mold, uh, because you, you do need uh, the little channels for the air to escape when you vacuum form it. Otherwise, you're not going to get a good pull. It's also not too critical on here because it's real hard to pull a canopy on here and get a good clear surface. You get a decent surface. But you still get a little takeoff from the material. So what we'll do when we vacuum form is we'll pull one canopy and then we'll trim it off, sand it down, wet sand it down, and then we'll pull another canopy on top of that. That will give us a nice clean result. So that's what we're looking for. So this is the first part. Get this, uh, get this sanded down. And uh, actually it's all uh, ready to go at this point. Take a little wet cloth and brush that off and we'll be ready to go. Okay, I uh, just wanted to show you this uh, second um, <clears throat> plug here. It had a couple of small little in, uh, imperfections in it. <clears throat> so what I do uh, when that happens is I use uh, Evercoat Rage lightweight uh, filler, automotive filler, and uh, mix that up. It's two parts. It dries in about, or cures in about six minutes. So fill in your spots, and uh, all you got to do then, uh, of course, is take a little 150 grit, sand it down just like the rest of the plug. It sands out real nice, and uh, then you're filled up, and you're ready to go and use this uh, for a vacuum forming plug. Okay, we're back on this. Now, the next step is the vacuum form canopy, so you need a vacuum box. This is a very simple construction of a, a box. We got a, uh, a quarter inch ply or a half, a half inch ply uh, bottom on here and about three inch high um, just uh, plywood or whatever you want to use sides and then it's covered in uh, one eighth inch pegboard. So we've got the holes in here. This little thing down here is just uh, uh, cut off from a vacuum hose and, and siliconed in there so that you've got a place to put your vacuum hose in. When you assemble this thing together and screw it together, you want to run silicon uh, cement or silicon glue uh, sealer through all the joints so that you get a good airtight seal when it all cures up. Um, on the top, um, depending on the size of the frame that we're going to be using, 
I lay down an uh, inch and a half inch wide weather stripping to give you a cushiony feel for the uh, frame to go against. And then I cover that with packing tape uh, because when you bring that uh, hot plastic down, sometimes it tends to stick to the tape, but it won't stick to the uh, uh, packing tape. So <clears throat> basically, this is a frame. Just a simple construction of uh, out of wood and uh, you know screwed and glued so it's good and, and strong with these little extensions on there. What that does, it, depending on the size of your oven, this is the maximum size frame I can use in my oven. I slide it in and these uh, little extensions here run on the rails inside that holds your oven rack and uh, this supports your frame. So the frame is in here like this. Now, these rails I've got on here, when you're vacuum forming small parts, you don't really need these. Because when you, when you vacuum form a small part, and you've got a small frame, and you slam down on it, it's pretty easy to get it centered without any motion. But when you get into a bigger, <clears throat> a bigger plug like these, and you don't have these, what can happen is, you come at it, you're not exactly centered, and as you touch it down and realize it and move it back and forth to try to get it centered on, on the uh, box, you wind up distorting the plastic and so you don't get a good pull. Uh, this way, when I pull this out of the oven, I can just slide this in here like this, butt it against the back ones, butt it against the side ones. Now, if I was doing this alone, I'd butt it against here and butt it down there and then just slide it down like this. And that gives me a good seal. The best way that I found to do it is if you, if you can get two people, and I'll probably use my wife during the demonstration, she, hand, she get, grabs a hold of one end and you grab a hold of the other end over here, and then you both go down together, and that gives you a nice, even uh, dropping of the frame down over the plug. You push down on it, and you'll feel the plastic resist, and you just push it down. Push it down flat against the um, foam tape, and you'll, that thing will just suck down, as we'll see in, in uh, a later part of the video. So uh, that's basically it for this step. This is uh, how to do your vacuum box, uh, your frames. You can do your frames out of anything. Uh, one frame I had in another oven that was a little smaller, and I, I needed to get really close. I couldn't have the wide edge that I've got on here. I just used 3 8 inch square um, spruce, then I had to reinforce it with little angle brackets, aluminum angle brackets, and aluminum rails on the side. And uh, that, that works well in that oven. Uh, most of the time, you probably won't get into pulling a plug that's, that's at the maximum of your oven, but you might. So uh, in case you do this, this is how you go about setting it up. Okay, that's it for this step. Okay, one thing I wanted to add was uh, if you're using smaller frames like these here, um, and your plastic or your uh, foam tape is a smaller square inside here, the holes on the outside you can uh, you can see here they have duct tape. So when you pull this, if I was going to go to a smaller frame. I pull this plastic off and then I duct tape all around it until I get down to the size that I want just inside the cutout and then I lay down my weather stripping tape right in here in that area around here. And then when you when you pull this down, slide it down like so, the duct tape is over here so you don't have any air loss and you get a good seal inside a smaller frame.